In recent weeks, there was a lot of drama in the media and the space community about the uncontrolled re-entry of a massive 20-ton Long March 5B rocket core stage, posing a potential threat to inhabited areas. On the other hand, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs declared that this was common practice, basically accusing foreign media of smearing China. So how risky was this Long March 5B rocket body re-entry, and how much is this common practice in the space industry? Let's deep dive into this topic, as always, based on the facts. On July the 24th, a Long March 5B launch from the Wenchang Space Launch Center, situated in China's southernmost province, the island of Hainan. The launch went smoothly, putting the Wentian Space Laboratory on a 41-degree inclination orbit to dock with the Chinese space station's Tianhe core module. But then what happened to the rocket parts? Well, the four kerosene and liquid oxygen powered side boosters, which provide 90% of the thrust at liftoff, separated from the core stage at approximately T plus 180 seconds after the launch. At this point, their speed was still suborbital, so they followed a fairly predictable trajectory. And the same goes for the 20 meter long payload fairings, which were jettisoned at around T plus 220 seconds. And this trajectory predictability means that there were announcements called NOTAMs that were published in advance by Chinese authorities, making public the landing area of this debris in the South China Sea. Now, beyond the fairings and the boosters, the main remaining piece of space hardware was the 20-ton core stage, which on the Long March 5B has the unusual characteristic of also being the rocket's upper stage. And because of this, when injecting the Wintian space lab into its initial orbit, the core stage also reached orbital velocity itself. And so shortly after the launch on July the 24th, we ended up with the Long March 5B core stage stranded in an elliptical orbit with a perigee of 180 kilometers and an apogee of 300 kilometers. And the thing is, the low altitude perigee was sufficiently low for the very thin atmosphere to start generating drag, making the orbit decay progressively over a period of a couple of days. And indeed, six days later, the core stage re-entered, fortunately, over the Sulu Sea, splashing down somewhere between the island of Borneo and the Philippines. And so why was there all of this drama around this event if no one was actually hurt? Well, several reasons. The first one is unpredictability. When your space debris is in a fast decaying orbit around the Earth, the effect of the variable atmospheric density and the tumbling rocket body and many other factors make the re-entry point almost entirely unpredictable. For China's Long March 5B core stage, for example, just a couple of days before re-entry, we only knew that it would re-enter somewhere between the latitudes of 41 degrees north and 41 degrees south. And you can see on this chart that's published by the Aerospace Corporation that even just days before the re-entry, the uncertainty on the time and day of when this would happen was an interval of 48 hours. And when you consider that this kind of debris orbits the Earth roughly once every 90 minutes, this means that this debris could still at that point land absolutely anywhere. And it's this unpredictability which has generated fears, some people putting forward, for example, that 88% of the world's population was situated between the two latitudes of 41 degrees north and 41 degrees south. But this unpredictability is not specific to the Long March 5B. It's the case for all uncontrolled re-entries, which, to be honest, aren't that rare. So the more likely cause for the international reactions was the size of the Long March 5B core stage. Because when small spacecraft re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, they tend to break and burn up completely, but larger debris have a higher chance of having pieces survive the fiery descent into the Earth's atmosphere and hitting the ground. And this is even more the case for rocket stages, which have parts that are designed to resist very high temperatures, as opposed to, say, satellites, which during the launch phase are inside the fairings, which form some sort of protective cocoon. And so the Long March 5B core stage, as mentioned, weighs roughly 20 tons, making the past three launches of the rocket since 2020 the fourth, fifth, and sixth largest pieces of debris to ever re-enter the atmosphere without any control, and they represent the only uncontrolled re-entries above 10 tons since 1991, if we set aside launch accidents like Space Shuttle Columbia and the Phobos Grunt mission. 
Now, before digging deeper into the Long March 5B, I just want to take a minute to thank Atlas VPN, the sponsor for today's video. Atlas VPN is a great tool if you're like me and you're concerned about safety issues when using the internet. What a VPN software does is that it masks your device's IP address, encrypting it and routing it through secure networks, hiding your online identity and protecting your data. And this is typically very useful if you often use public Wi-Fi networks, and it also prevents your internet service provider from selling your browsing data to advertisers. With a VPN, you can also choose the country of the server you're routing your data through, and this enables you to get access to better deals when shopping online or buying airline tickets. And you can also get access to content that would otherwise not be available in your country on your usual platforms like Netflix. Atlas VPN fulfills all of these tasks brilliantly, and probably more importantly, it is also very easy to use. They're currently running a big discount where you can get a three-year subscription for less than $2 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can get Atlas VPN now at the following link, get.atlasvpn.com slash dongfanghour. Thanks again, Atlas VPN, for sponsoring today's video. And with that being said, back to the Long March 5B. A way to avoid uncontrolled re-entries is to deorbit the upper stage by performing a deorbit burn, like what SpaceX often does with the Falcon 9 upper stage, where they can choose to make the rocket debris re-enter over a specific patch of the ocean. The Long March 5B, on the other hand, is not equipped with this sort of system. It mainly focuses on the passivation of the core stage, meaning that you know, the pressurized fluids and propellant are vented out before re-entry to avoid any explosion. Now, just to be clear, from a legal standpoint, there's nothing illegal in what China did with the Long March 5B. There are some international standards regarding space debris to which all space powers, including China, have adhered to, notably the IADC Space Debris Mitigation Guidelines and the United Nations Guidelines for Long-Term Sustainability of Outer Space Activities. But the thing is, these statements merely state that, and quoting them here, States should consider applying design techniques to minimize the risk associated with fragments of space objects, surviving uncontrolled re-entry, and if a spacecraft or orbital stage is to be disposed of by re-entry into the atmosphere, debris that survives should not pose an undue risk to people or property. So the fact is, controlled re-entry is not an obligation, and the appreciation of this undue risk is really up to the launching country, according to these texts. And China's position on this, as expressed by the Chinese Space Agency and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is that most of the debris of the Long March 5B would burn up during the re-entry, and that for the remaining pieces of debris, since 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water and the remaining 30% of land is to a large extent uninhabited, the level of risk was considered acceptable. And I think another important factor from China's perspective is that the number of launches of the Long March 5B is relatively low. Let me illustrate this with a quick example. Let's take a re-entering rocket body that has a 1 in 10,000 chance to generate casualties or damage. While that figure is rather good, it's compliant with international standards, if you launch this rocket 10,000 times, then your chances of something happening is still very high compared to if you just launch that rocket a handful of times. And in this regard, the Long March 5B is a rocket that was designed almost exclusively for the deployment of the Chinese space station. It was launched three times so far, and it should be launched another two times for Mengtian in October and for the Shuntian Space Telescope in 2024. And so, despite the individual chance of the Long March 5B re-entry leading to casualties being significantly higher than other uncontrolled re-entries due to just the, the size of this rocket core stage, the combined chances of all of the launches, so five launches, were probably considered by the Chinese to be acceptable compared to the rest of their space program. Now, don't misunderstand me here. I think the uncontrolled re-entry of this massive piece of debris is definitely a very bad practice, especially in an era where we are starting to see really a growing number of launches due to all these constellation projects. And just to illustrate my point, between 2000 and 2015, the world was launching on average 73 rockets per year. But now, so just last year in 2021, mankind launched twice as many rockets with 144 launches, and we're looking at several times this number per year at the end of this decade. 
An excellent paper that was published earlier this year in Nature by two Canadian universities estimated that current practices would mean that there is a 10% chance of uncontrolled reentries causing one or more casualties over the next decade. And I personally find that to be absolutely huge. Although we've managed to avoid any casualties over the past 70 years of launch history, it's probably time for clear, controlled reentry rules to be established internationally, and more importantly, for these to be enforced. The Chinese Long March 5B uncontrolled reentry is probably the most spectacular illustration of what must be avoided in the future, with an estimated probability of causing casualties of between 0.1% and 0.4%. And with several big chunks of debris of the rocket actually reported to have been found over Malaysia and Indonesia. I think it's also worth noting that most spacefaring nations have been guilty of doing this very thing in the past. A paper by the University of Tokyo in 2020 and an orbital debris briefing by NASA in 2017 revealed that the US occasionally granted waivers to non compliant Delta IV and Atlas V launches including an Atlas V launch in 2015, which had a human casualty risk of 1 in 600. And there's probably a good chance that we find similar examples if we start digging into Russian, European, and Indian launches. Now, having said all that, I just want to say I tend to be more of an optimist myself regarding the disappearance of these practices. There's been a strong trend of increasing compliance in the US over the past decade, especially since the publication of the Orbital Debris Mitigation Standard Practices by the US government in 2010. There's also a good chance that China will also follow suit with its newer rocket designs, and we already see them deorbiting a number of their spacecraft at the end of their lives and testing devices like deorbiting sails. And beyond that, I think it's very possible that all the bad press generated by these Long March 5B reentries could play a role in changing the practices for Chinese rocket body reentries. So if you're interested in knowing more about the Long March 5B launch or the Chinese space station, we have a couple of videos on this very topic, including one live stream on the channel. And otherwise, I just want to say a special thanks to all our Patreon supporters that make this channel possible, with a special mention to Jonathan, who pointed me to this fantastic paper published in Nature and mentioned in this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.